Ladies and gentlemen, here we go with our next bout of the evening. This one being brought to you by the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the ex-MMA featherweight division. When the action starts inside the cage, our referee, Mr. Andrew Glenn. And now, let's meet our fighters. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, standing 5 feet 10 and weighing in 145.8 pounds. He comes to the cage tonight with a professional record, seven wins and three defeats. Representing Sanford MMA and fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, please welcome Kyle Uruguay. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, standing five feet seven, weighing in 145.2 pounds. Tonight, he comes to the cage with a professional record, eight wins and five defeats. Representing Broadway Jiu-Jitsu and fighting out of Boston, Massachusetts. Please welcome Kyle Crash Bushniak. Three rounds of the featherweight division here at X MMA. Three five-minute rounds, ready to go. Kyle Bogniak and Kyle Uruguay. Let's get this rocket, guys. This should be a good one. Yeah, like one of the things that Kyle said, he, one of his keys is to stay Wee. cool. Did you collected. say Kyle or Kyle? Kyle. Kyle, that's very difficult. Kyle, he's start he, saying last names on this way. <laughs> and he said he wanted to stay nice, cool, relaxed. That's one of the keys for him is to keep his pace, but to not waste energy. You know, uh, you know Bokniak has a, has a different kind of style. He's not a traditional type fighter. He, he doesn't really adhere to the rules or do the things that he's supposed to do, does he? Yeah, I mean, Kyle has a mean right hand. That's something that we trained for when I fought him. And he, he comes from a good, you know, I mean, he, he comes from a good boxing gym, you know, down at, uh, with Welsh down in, uh, or Welch. Uh, Is that with Welch? Yeah, Welch, yep, Welch in Boston. So, I mean, he's, he, he works with the top guys down there. And, uh, That's a good and kick. got a mean right hand, so we'll see if he can land it tonight. Uruguay with some good kicks there so, so far here in the first round. But I know what I was saying, you know, sometimes there's fighters who, who aren't, they don't, they don't move in a traditional way or throw the traditional types of combinations. It makes it difficult. Yeah, what it is is he's a pressure fighter. You know, he likes to come forward and he likes to throw hard punches. And, you know, his nickname's Crash, so he likes to come forward, man. He likes to, he likes to create that contact and step forward. And when, you, when you're backing up the whole fight, it's very difficult to land good shots. I don't know if that's a nickname you want. <laughs> is that a good one? That sounds cool. I mean, I think he played football, and he was a, he was a football player down, you know, down in Boston. So probably got that nickname for, you know, laying some wicks on some guys. Uruguay so, showing some relatively sharp, uh, sharp striking thus far as he went for that single leg. Chris, that's your department. What do you think about his boxing and his kicks? Boxing is looking very crisp right now, clean. Uh, both these guys look very good. Like you talked about earlier, um, Kyle looks like he's a little bit unorthodox. He's switching from yes. right hand to the southpaw, going back and forth. They're getting Kyle's getting more of a, a, a traditional stance. Kyle's been pretty good with those, those left hooks and those low leg kicks. And those are pretty sharp as leg kicks. Yeah, Uruguay also throwing some really good kicks. He's throwing some really good kicks. He's going low, he's going high. He lands a nice calf kick yep. there. He's really mixing it up and he's starting to get Kyle to guess. He has been mixing up a striking. And that's Sanford, right? Yeah, Henry Hoof, Sean Soriano. What is it about Henry Hoof that's, that he's been able to, to really bring out uh, striking prowess in all his fighters? I mean, Henry Hoof is a dust kickboxing yeah. legend. So he I is, but, but, so, but he's just able to bring it out of his guys. As we see, Kyle, oh, he's really hurt. striking he's and hurt hurting right Bokniak. Bokniak is hurt. I don't care how tough he is. You can't take too many of those shots. Your guy's striking is really looking on point. Yeah, he's landing some good combinations, good shots, and he's mixing it up. And that's that Henry Hook Dutch kickboxing, man. He's throwing these punches, Oy. uppercuts. Uh, could we see another stoppage here at X MMA tonight? Oh, another shot. Bokniak momentarily wobbled. Bokniak might need to try and take this, this fight to the ground for a little bit. That, that lead leg is starting to hurt a lot as well. And Uruguay's doing a great job of mixing up the strikes high and low. Yeah, that's really important. When you keep your opponent guessing, they don't know where the strikes are coming from. That's when you can land clean shots. 
Now, he's taking a lot of shots, but Bokmiak is known for being a tough guy and being able to handle this, right? Yeah, man, this is another level right now. I mean, Kyle just ate some serious shots right now, and he's still in this fight, and he's still throwing back. He's okay with two hard punches right there, but a great sprawl right there. Good hits from Uruguay. Absolutely. I do like the idea, though, trying to mix it up a little bit. Chubbs Peterson right there. It's all on the hips. <laughs> Another Tubbs Peterson reference. How many times did you get two of those? Well, one, one during the prelims and one during the main card. Okay, okay. That, no, that's great. Oh, great calf kick. Another Tell one. That Mixing it up. It's really bothering him. He's going back to more of a southpaw stance to stop that from happening. Yeah, we saw that in the Conor McGregor Dustin Poirier fight the other week. That's how Dustin took out Conor. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of fighters, including myself, are looking at that. Hey, beautiful right hand. Yeah, Bokniak landed a mean right hand right there. Yeah. It's not all, it's not going to be easy for Uruguay. But talking about that low calf kick, you know, guys can, ch can check it, but you have to check it and turn your shin out. You can't just lift your leg because it doesn't do anything. You have to actually point your shin bone out. Yeah, and now people even kick it down at the ankle. There's really not much there so if you get hit in the shit in the ankle with someone's shin it's, it's gonna hurt kicking the ankle now that's just mean <laughs> <laughs> but effective <laughs> another more one. another like, calf kick there Bokniak needs to really close the distance to clinch and make this fight a little more dirty don't you think absolutely that'd be his best game plan he's staying in his opponent's range he needs to keep it closer to where he can land punches and an opponent's gonna have more trouble <laughs> the closer inside he gets the more you know got the little bit shorter reach that's better for him you know I'm looking at Bokniak's face though and his facial expressions are not changing he doesn't seem bothered. Well, I mean, I don't care. You, you can't take those punches like that for that too long. That was a good right hand, but he ate two more. Now I know why he's called Crash. <laughs> Man, what an entertaining round. What a good round, yeah. And Kyle Uruguay really looked impressive. His striking has been maybe as sharp as it's ever been. Yeah, man, that was a really special performance. Really, really good striking, really good... Uh really good combinations, but I mean, even more it is Kyle, the amount of damage he's able to take and walk through it. I mean, that it, that's the different levels that you see, is that's what makes a guy that's a UFC fighter. They got the skills, and then, then you see that there. You know, it, we, all the damage they took, all the, all the hard shots he took to the head, I think the biggest problem right now is going to be that left front leg, because that's the thing that's going to change the fight. We saw you talked about with the Conor McGregor fight, same thing here. He was hurt pretty bad from that, I believe. Okay, you got the replay right here, and that's after he hurt him. You can see I mean, he wasn't hurt bad, but he was taking a lot of shots. I'm not sure. He is I'm not sure how he was not hurt. That bad he, after he's all a durable that. guy. I mean, Charles would know. I mean, did, were you able to land a lot of strikes like that? And was yeah. he able to walk through them? I hit Kyle with everything I had. I'm gonna be honest, and that's that's the one reason I said that. I had his leg. His leg was purple, blue, everything. But he walked through it. So even though I see him eating these calf kicks, I know that Kyle's fought through it because he's done it before against me. So gonna Ra be a good second round. Round number two of three. Bokniak and Kyle Uruguay. And it's kind of confusing, Kyle and Kyle. So we're trying to use last names. Yep. And, and we've talked about we talked about this earlier. I really like to see how a guy responds after having a tough first round. Sometimes people wilt and sometimes they, they just excel afterwards. Well, we already know that Bokniak is able to do that. Yeah. He's already proven himself, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. But we're also going to find out what Uruguay has, you know, because Can you to keep be able it going? to give this yep. much damage and see the guy still standing, sometimes that breaks fighters and sometimes it makes them. So we're going to see what's going to happen right now. He looks sharp right now. He's coming out looking like he did in the first round, and he's landing good shots. Well, Chris and I were talking about this earlier. Um, it might have been a conversation off camera. We were talking about how disheartening it could be to, to unload on a guy yeah. and have him just stay there and keep looking at you and coming back. And that's what's happening right now. And some, you know, it's happened before where fighters get t they tire themselves out by beating <laughs> up their opponents so much, and then they have nothing left. Yep. Seen that many times. Sometimes fighters get out there and they hurt somebody. They, they throw everything at them, and they've still got two minutes left in the round. Yeah. Nice low Ugh. kick there again. And Pockneyak returns the same kick. Returns the favor. In kind. Oh, and, oh wow. Changing it up. Great hips there. He really, he, he, I thought he had that single leg. Man, these guys are both so fast and, and, and so athletic and able to get us up very quickly. An, an ebb and flow here. They kind of scramble, get a little crazy, then they slow down for a few seconds and gauge where their opponent is and where he's going, and then they start to explode once again. Yeah, but even when they're slowing down, they're still throwing a lot of hard punches in there. You know, I mean, they're just not able to slow down at all, really. Yeah, we just saw that big right by Kyle. And this is what makes Kyle who he is. This is what makes him so special. The fact that he's able to walk through this, keep coming forward, and take this damage and take it to the next level. I mean, I mean, he's still in this fight, and this is you know the full, just about halfway through the fight. Oh, another mean low kick there, and Kyle switched stances right away. 
I, you know, I would have thought the Bognac would have looked for more takedowns. Are you surprised, Charles? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, I think so, but it's also very difficult because the way Uruguay's fighting with the distance strike, he's throwing kicks from outside, so you can't just shoot in on that because then you get sprawled on like that. And the problem is that Kyle's starting to shoot these takedowns later in the fight, but it's after his leg's already been affected and, you know, effectively weakened. Yeah, you can, if you can see his leg, I don't oh, know if wow. you can see it through the, the, the oh. camera, but he has a big lump on his leg. I'm sure he does. Oh, yeah, I see it. And it just got bigger. Yeah, he's not able to push his opponent up against the fence. Uh, otherwise, he's got too much good movement. To he's keeping his back away from the fence like that. You know, I, I actually broke one of my opponent's legs with, with low kicks. Uh, oh, really? I, I broke his tibia and his tibia, but it wasn't in the calf kick. I was actually kicking the regular kick right at the knee. But, man, th these seem more effective. Big shots there from Kyle inside. I mean, he's he's in this fight 100. percent Oh, without a doubt, this isn't this isn't a one-sided fight at all. Man, both these guys showing a lot a lot of skill and a lot of heart. Yeah, this is an awesome fight. And <laughs> this is what I came to see tonight. <laughs> well, all the fights have been great. I mean, I say right now this is probably the fight of the night so far, right? Absolutely. Now, considering that you beat Kyle, are you hoping he wins because you want to make it make, makes you look better? I don't know. It's <laughs> tough. I, it's tough. I, I mean, I love both these guys. They're both warriors. And, you know, I want to say I'm, I mean, I'm rooting for them both, but this is it's a great fight, man. This is what I, this is what I came to see. Now, this has been a stand-up fight pretty much the whole time. I mean, there's been some quick single legs and double legs, but nothing really sustained. As, and as I say that, of course, we get a single leg attempt by Kyle Uruguay, but well, Bucknick yeah, able to fight it off. Yeah. Yeah. Bozak's really starting to do a good job now of, of kind of walking through and walking his opponent down. You know, he, his pressure is finally starting to pay dividends. Yeah, I guess. Oh, he really is trying to come through. And maybe Uruguay is oh. running out of gas. Maybe it's just what he talked about. Uruguay can't dish out, dish it out anymore. And now he's taking some hammers. Oh, yep, yes. I was putting the pedal to the metal. Oy. Gas on full. Big shots he's landing. He These really, are big. Big really, punches. He really looks like he hit the wall right there, this Kyle. He looks very tired right now over the last half of the round. Taking this, a lot of clean shots. I think, you know, I, I wasn't, I'm not trying to predict anything, but that's just what I said. Kyle just got tired of beating him up. Yeah, I mean, maybe his hands hurt. We don't know. <laughs> well, now his face is going to hurt. Yeah, Kyle <laughs> smells blood right now. He's going for the kill, and he got him, he got him on wobbly legs, man. Good body shot. Jeez, right there. Can to fight through this. Uruguay make it through eight more seconds and see the third round here at XMMA? What a turnaround, man. man this this fight. tide has totally Amazing. turned right now. He was lucky to get out of that round. How prophetic is Charles Rosa, who he's talking about? He's going to be able to turn it around later on in the fight. More of a prophet, less of a fighter, you know? Yeah. I mean, it helps that I was That in could be your new him. nickname, the prophet <laughs> fighter. Prophet, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> no, but it was exactly what, it was kind of what we were alluding to earlier. There are fights where guys are delivering a lot of damage, and just after six, seven, eight minutes, they're running out of gas. I hit I hit you too many times ahead, and I'm tired. Well, it's, it's just like in baseball. You only have so many fastballs. Maybe he threw them all. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's a I'm, great analogy, actually. Yeah, I mean, and this is one of the things, too, is that, like, this is the difference. You see, all the, the, a lot of guys in the gym, they have the skills to be in the UFC, you know, but this is what it is. It takes this durability and this cardio and all this to really be able to fight there, you know? I mean, this fight is amazing. I can't believe how Kyle Bogner is come back <laughs> and he was laying he was laying down big shots let's take a look at this replay here as we get ready to start the round boom big, big right, hand. right hand big left hand just walking his opponent down staying right in front of him the pressure finally started to pay dividends it takes a while so as we get ready to start this third and final round here in the featherweight division at xmma now we talked about can kyle bachniak come back in the first round now let's switch it around can kyle uruguay come back from that and finish strong and that's what we're going to find out a lot of times you know but it wasn't hurt that much. I mean, in the first one, he wasn't gassed. He was more hurt, it looked like. But now he's able to regain his feet and he's coming forward. If you're tired, can you still come back? What a great matchup. Another, another well-matched fight. All night long, we've had very equally matched fights. That's all you can ask for, equally matched yeah. fights. The sport has come along so well and, and, and progressed. And the skill of the fighters that these two guys are really showing it. Yeah, there's no doubt. This is the best live fight I can see since I can remember. I can't think of a better fight already, and we still got four more minutes of this. Man. <laughs> this, this is great. This is, this is fireworks. Thanks to Charles Rosa for coming and joining us, a former <laughs> opponent of Kyle Bogniak. And Charles, you got a fight coming up your, yourself. Yeah, I'm fighting February 20th, Las Vegas versus Derek Miner. So everyone tune in. It'll be on ESPN. So can't wait to get back in there. Man. Oh, 
Another calf kick, and Kyle flyers back with a head kick. Even when he landed that head kick, it kind of knocked him backwards. Man, this is absolute violence. And violence does solve everything. It'll decide who wins this fight. <laughs> Man, I haven't won one right now. What, do you, what about you I guys? I agree, 100 percent. Absolutely. I don't see how else you could really see it. Now, now that's the thing. If Kyle is Uruguay is able to dig and get through this and and become victorious, I will yeah. be incredibly impressed. And it's also going to show that he's ready for the next level. He's ready for the UFC. I mean, if he can if, if he can come back from a, a thing like that and show that resilience and show yeah. that toughness, that just shows that he has all the skills to be at that top level. Great knee. And, I mean, and what good shape would he have to be in? How can he be in that tired in just a one-minute break? You're able to get it all back together. And I'll tell you what, these guys are not going to be walking very well in the morning, I guarantee it. <laughs> and no, neither fighter really getting a, a solid takedown to keep it. I mean, their takedowns and, and takedown defense have matched up as, as well. Yeah, both of them have been flawless. They've gotten in deep as well on, on good shots. It's just good takedown defense. Ooh, ooh, good straight kick to the body. You know, for a guy who's known for his jiu-jitsu, Bokniak's got some effective kicks. Yeah, for sure. Like, like I mentioned before, he was working with that guy, Jake, who's a, he's a guy that lives in Thailand. Jake Manini lived in Thailand for years, and it's a new coach that Kyle's been working with. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned before, you know, Kyle got to work with Calvin, you know, work with Calvin Cater, Rob Font, Rico DeShulo, Teki Matsuda, all in Boston. He's, you know, some of the top guys from there. Oh, that beautiful take that. But look at this. Just right up, oh, right my again. This scramble to Bokniak. Amazing. I mean, Bokniak is just a savage. Look how he's just walking right straight forward. These guys are pushing both. this guy backwards. Amazing fight. I mean, no, no matter what, congratulations to both these guys. These guys have really dug deep and shown a lot of skills on top of that. Uh, yeah, and skills, heart, a little bit of everything. This yeah. is exactly what you want to see in a fighter. Okay, we're getting into that last minute 45, and Uruguay is starting to slow down again. Yep, seems like he keeps He's hitting that wall right about this point. And you can't blame him. <laughs> yeah, it's coming down to who wants it more right now. This is the last minute and a half of the fight, last 90 seconds. Who wants it more? You know who? At the moment, it looks like it's going to be Bokniak, but we'll see if Uruguay is able to pull something out of a hat. And this is where every time that you're in the gym tired, this is what it comes down to. This is what you do it for this last minute and a half of the fight. So yeah. we're going to see who worked harder. We're going to figure it out in this next minute. Here we go. Know, oh. I think one of the one of the good things right now too is it, it, it's usually the whoever's winning the last part of the round that the judges remember. So if you can win any part of the round, you want it to be the last part. Both corners screaming, begging their fighters for some more output for the last 60 seconds. That's easy for them to say. <laughs> Look how much output they've already put yeah, in. Yeah, these guys have, I mean, I would love to see the strike numbers on this. It's gotta be high. And also the, the, the landing percentage. They're not missing. Yeah. 45 seconds ago here in the third and final round of Kyle Uruguay and Kyle Bokniak. Two more fights to go after this here at XMMA. Eric Apple joined by Chris Lytle and Charles Rosa, and we're seeing some great action finishing up the last 30 seconds of this fight. <laughs> Bokniak looks fresher. He looks like he's coming on stronger. He's getting a second win. He doesn't get tired. I'm not sure how he's, he's able to do this. Charles, how did you beat this guy? <laughs> Decision. <laughs> That's how I beat him. What did you do to him? I know, man. My goodness. I fought my heart out against him, man. I was, I was no tired. I think I've been after a fight ever. I mean, look at he just he's a walking savage, straight man. forward the entire time, never taking a step backwards, just well, stalking his opponent. What a fight! And that's it. Third and final round over here at X MMA. Woo! I'll tell you what. I think Kyle Bokniak might have pulled out the second and third rounds, but man, Kyle. Uh, Uruguay showed some great skills. His striking was so mean and so devastating in the beginning. Oh, man, he did a lot of damage, especially in that first round. Second round, he was started off really well, but I, I was really impressed how he was able to come back in the third round. Yeah, man, I really was impressed, too, by Uruguay's, like, mixing his kicks up. He's going low, calf kick. We thought he had him almost, you know, he almost dropped Kyle a couple times with that low calf kick, and then he's going high head kick, knees, showing that Dutch kickboxing. You see Sean Soriano, another guy also fought in the UFC. Great and beat uh, Sean Soriano in there, but you know, he has that beautiful Dutch kickboxing, fought in glory a couple times, fought in the UFC, so man, this Great is embrace some high right level there. striking. Amazing fight with these guys. Great embrace. Let's look at some re let's look at replays. Low kicks coming from Bokniak after he was the one getting low kicks. Man, this is uh, 
lot of good takedown wow. attempts for a thrown by both guys. I could not believe that nobody was really able to sustain the takedown. They got up immediately. Just great defense by both guys. And that was a real dynamic takedown uh, attempt by Kyle Uruguay. That was a beautiful I trip that he did right there, but it didn't even matter. I mean, Bajan got up right away. Man, this is a, this is a tough one, but I, I, I'm going to say Kyle Bach got pulled out the second and third rounds. And Uruguay just ran out of gas halfway through the fight and couldn't really deliver as much damage as, as he could in the beginning. Although he still, he didn't just drop off the cliff. He, he, he faded he slowly as he was throwing the punches and kicks. But I mean, like you said earlier, I'm not <laughs> sure how you don't get tired if you're punching a guy that many times. That's a lot of output to put out there unless you take a lot off your punches. But he wasn't. He was trying to knock his opponent out. Well, our judges are uh, tabulating. We talked about it earlier. They got their calculator out. They got their abacus out. They're adding up all the scores. They're going to figure it out. And they're going to let us know here momentarily. We're going to throw it into the ring to Christopher James. Ladies and gentlemen, every once in a while, Great fight. it's a little fitting to walk out in front of two men that put on a hell of a show and okay. give them a round of applause. Jesus. Give it up for these guys. Yeah. No doubt fight of the night so far, man. Incredible Great to meet you. Thank you for doing it right here in the XMMA cage. After three rounds of absolutely incredible action, we go to our judges for a decision. All three judges score the bout identically, 29-28. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Kyle Krish Bosniak! Right there, Kyle Bosniak pulling it.